Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna check this guy, which is the Nokia 4.2. This is the box that the Nokia 4.2 comes in. It's an Android 1 powered device which doesn't have great specs for the price which is 10,919 rupees. On opening the box, the first thing is the phone neatly wrapped in plastic. Let's keep the phone aside and check the rest of the contents which is sorted into two sections and we'll start with the left side and here you get a good quality SIM ejector pin and also underneath you get the documentations. Then on the right side, hiding behind this flap is the accessories and first let's check the charging cable which is actually a micro USB cable and it's a disappointment Nokia could have gone with USB-C then there's the charging brick which is the second disappointment because it's a very slow charger it's just a 5 volt 1 amp charger and here it seems like Nokia is following the footsteps of Apple and then the final accessory is a headphone which is of really low quality now let's check the phone and here in this wrapping one thing which is highlighted is this dedicated Google Assistant button it's a good add-on if you use Google Assistant a lot. First things first, and the initial impressions while holding the phone is that it's a very comfortable one to hold. The size of the phone is perfect, and the phone also feels solidly built even though the sides are made of plastic. But still, it doesn't feel cheap, and the front and rear is made of glass. It is this nice 2.5D glass that merges well with the plastic side. On the rear of the phone, you get the fingerprint scanner along with the vertically aligned dual camera with flash, and the camera module, it doesn't protrude out and it's a good thing. Then for the buttons, that's why Nokia did a cool innovative thing and that's the power button. It also acts as a notification LED light. I think this is a great thing because you surely won't miss out this light. All the buttons are made of plastic but has good tactile feedback. Then for the ports available, starting with the bottom section, you get the primary microphone, micro USB charging port and also the single firing speaker grill. And on the top, there is the secondary microphone and also the headphone jack. Now on checking the SIM tray, it can take two nano sims and also a micro SD card. It's actually a good thing that the phone has a dedicated SD card slot because the storage is just 32 GB. The setup rules of the phone is pretty straightforward and while setting up the device, it showed a software update which is the best part of getting this device. It's an Android 1 device which means you'll surely get monthly security updates. Now during the setup process, you can enroll your fingerprint for fingerprint unlock but the process was a bit slow. Once you enter all the information and the setup process is done, you will be taken to the home screen which looks like stock Android and again it's because this device is an Android 1 device. Now before doing anything, the first thing I checked is the storage available out of the box and it's approximately 21.17 GB. Now one good thing here is that you can use a good quality SD card to expand the storage for storing photos or even to install apps. And since you have that feature, I feel storage is not going to be an issue. But what I feel is going to be an issue is the processor. It's a Snapdragon 439 which is an octo-core processor, but it's a low-end processor. As of right now, it's fine. Light tasks work well, but still, I noticed light hiccups while scrolling through some feeds. And about gaming, I tried PUBG and Asphalt 9, and actually both of them work with some frame drops, but you can play the game and complete levels. I also ran Geekbench, and the scores are disappointing. Now, the Geekbench score is just for reference, and even though the scores are low, if the phone can perform daily tasks without issues, that's all we need. And out of the box, as I said before, till now, everything seems to be okay. So let's check the display, which has the new 2019 design theme, which means there is a tiny U-shaped notch to accommodate the front camera, and also the bezels are fairly slim. There are other budget phones in this price range with slimmer bezels, but still, this one looks neat. The actual display size is 5.71 inches, and that's the reason for the compact form factor of the phone. This is a LCD display, and my initial impression is that it's an average panel. The colors look fine and same is the case with the viewing angles. But what I did notice is that this LCD has a bit of irregular backlighting at the edges. And also it's just a HD display. So till now it's just average and I thought maybe it's the camera that's gonna impress me. But that's also a bit of letdown. On the rear you get dual cameras and on the front there is an 8 megapixel camera. The shots that the main camera takes is average to good depending on the light available but what's more disappointing is the camera app which is slow. The selfies are also soft and overall the pictures captured are a bit dull in terms of color. Then for the battery, it's a 3000 mAh battery which doesn't give great battery life. I did test the battery just once and it was an average use day but at the end of the day it did show low battery. And also since the charger included is a very basic and slow charger, the charging time to fully charge from 10% to 100% 
was approximately 3 hours. Then one last thing is that the speaker used is also not a good one because the sound is a bit on the low side. So you might have got an idea here about the phone based on my initial impressions and it's not a positive one. Almost everything like the display, camera, performance, speaker, all are just average or just fine. And my first impression about these things is just okay. But what's impressed me about this phone as of now is the software, the build, the form factor, the dedicated assistant button which is a good add-on, then the earpiece, it sounds good, and also the fingerprint scanner, it's fast and also reliable. So to end this video, what I have to say is that I feel Nokia priced this device without checking the competition. Because in this price range, there are plenty of other options available which are better. I'm not going to give a final verdict about this phone right now, but I will do that after testing for some more time. And to be notified about that detailed review video, please do subscribe. And also if you like this video, please do hit the like button. See you again in the next one. Till then, 